Hey, what's going on everyone? This is your Shirley back with another video and today I have a really spicy crunch build for you guys and that is full magical overgrowth crunch and this is the build that normally whenever I cook builds up they end up being more on the fun side and they'll viable just enough that the hero feels perfectly fine without like it feels like your damage performance just falls off right but this is a build that I seriously think is really good on crunch actually and so like the so for, for the context um Crunch is one of the few heroes, one of the only heroes that actually scales on both physical and magical on all his abilities. So that allows him to be the true hybrid kind of character building both physical and magical items. However, most people default to physical items because you can see right here that he gets more scaling on physical um, power rather than magical power. But my kind of argument to that is if you actually look on average um, how much magical power is gained versus how much physical power is gained in these items, you're going to see there's a lot higher average of magical power being granted versus physical um, power. And as we saw, this gap you see and the scaling difference is not that large of a gap because you are gaining a lot more raw magical power than physical when you go for a full magical build. But another reason why this build is actually really, really dang good is because it gives you so much stats that the physical build won't give you. And a lot of that comes from Orbit Growth, just getting an insane amount of stats overall. R42 gives you a lot of just constant regen because your casting build is constantly uncrunched. Orbit Keeper is really insane. Tempest is actually a really insane item as well. Just allows you to 1v1 super, super good and have a lot of healing. And then Life Binder to just give you more wall. Um, Ability, haste, and then give you a lot of magical life saves. So essentially, it's the build that maximizes how much healing you can pull up, pull up on crunch, and you end up getting a crunch that is constantly doing abilities, and it's also healing a lot because end game you get 135 build to haste and that is just insane that allows you to just constantly just spam your abilities off cooldown it's just actually ridiculous on crunch for him to be able to just spam abilities without stopping the only thing that's gonna stop him is once he wants out of mana so i think this build is actually seriously super super good on him so i highly recommend that for any crunch choice out there that you give this build a shot and you let me know down in the comments how you guys think about this build because i actually think this build is going to really surprise people how well it performs Forms, and once you actually get into gameplay right here the second shot i want to give is that like i'm going to have two different games the first one's my normal so the commentary video that you guys come to expect but also the second game is going to be a non-commentary video where it's actually do a kill with choice play so i won't be really talking about the gameplay that one's going to be more raw fun gameplay and that one's end up being like the perfect showcase of this build once we got to the mid to late game portions of the game so big shout out to choice plays and lancy so um let's see so it was the one i played in the first game but both are um, awesome amazing people so i highly highly recommend that you guys go check out the contents right there but anyways i'm gonna stop rambling i'll let you guys enjoy the gameplay right here so i hope you guys enjoy it Hey, what's going on everyone? This is your Shirley back with another video and today we're going to be doing some crunch offlane but we're going to be doing the fun build today that I think is still pretty dang viable if you want to spice up your crunch gameplay without hindering your actual performance on him and that is going for a magical lifesteal build on him because for those who do not know crunch is one of the few heroes in the game that has double scaling meaning that his abilities benefit from both physical and magical um damage however he has more scaling on the physical side so normally it's better to build mostly physical only just physical for the most part because you can get all the items you want crunch on physical side you don't so there's no need in terms of like pure meta side um to have a um magical like item on crunch unless the passes are just really nutty on him but so we're going to be doing like a full magical build on him and we're going to be prioritizing the items that give a lot of life steal like open growth gives you healing um tempest obviously give you a lot of healing and then life finally gives you a lot of healing as well because the big difference between like physical and magical life steals as far as bruises are concerned is that um Magical items give you more access to like lifesteal items, but um, for physical items, it's a lot more limited, I would say. So for Crunch, if you want to like go for the more maximize sustain, like um, lifesteal kind of side, you may actually want to just start building um, your magical life items out because um, they ha there's a lot of really good items like I just listed that are really strong, especially Tempest. Tempest is like super, super strong. And at one point, people were running um, the whole like Tempest crunch with like Oathkeeper and Life Finder. And for good reason too. It's literally just because that item is just like 
insane. Um, people like we even want on countless, which counts is maybe like a um, hit of one target, but people will still want tempest on her to take the targets because that item just gives you so much value and the damage and healing for flies. So this is kind of like what makes this build kind of pop up more than anything. It's like taking advantage of the tempest and then stacking more like life stealing items on top of it makes for like a very life stealing kind of crunch gameplay right here. Even more, more so, you can ever get on like a physical build. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this would stack up the Sevra because Sevra is someone that's kind of annoying to kind of deal with um, for a lot of matches just because he's someone that can really sustain super well. Um, even the early game, it can be sometimes a little hard to knock him down. And as soon as you start bringing all those armor items, it can be really hard to kill him, even if you're a very good 1v1 duelist like the Quench. So um, this is gonna be kind of a damage check, I guess, to see um, how this build kind of stacks for terms of damage. And then I guess once we get the life stealing items component online, we can start to see how um, the sustain stacks up as well. Okay, we see the set watch is back right there, so it's actually shoved this in immediately. Because I want to go for a um, reset to match that, but also want to make sure that I can get um, tube up as well. See how I shove my lane in really fast? That should crash in. That should kind of go of whenever you're trying to reset, it's trying to get your lane to. Um, your minions to push up to the enemy tower because what can sometimes end up happening is if you don't reset your minions properly it could get stuck right outside the edge of the tower and then try to walk up and last hit or try to fix the wave when it's right next to your tower like that it can be really really awkward because that leaves you very vulnerable to like ganks right so that's why I did right there, just making sure that um, the wave is going to bounce back to a lot better spot for me to go farm at which I think Seva is sort of pushing it anyways even that he's like half mana already, so um, 28 to 12 CS, so we're doing very good. Doesn't have Brimstone, that means his damage is not quite there just yet, so that's good inf information as for me. Um, so I might be able to take a lot more aggressive trades against him because I know he doesn't have the Brimstone damage kicking in, um, to really threaten me a whole lot. A really quick trade right there because um, I would take that longer if I if I really wanted to, but like the minions does hurt a lot, and I'd rather minimize the damage I'll take from minions at the moment. So I'll do like the whole combo right there to kind of put in some damage right there, and then we're gonna kind of hold this wave right here. This is what I mean. This is the like situation I was trying to avoid is to save up pulling the freeze like this because then hold the wave. Push the way all the way in, but I did, so he didn't get the chance to freeze the wave like this. And now it's really awkward for him to step up because he's really wide in my tower, and it's gonna be really hard to for him to train into me because I have a safety net of my tower right, be right behind me right here. Um, whenever we can, like, I feel really comfortable with using my army like that because I'm living right next to my tower, but if I'm, like, next to his tower, I may not use my army this way because I might need that army to get out of the game. So obviously, if someone's pushed up right in the enemy tower, they're a lot more easier to gain than, let's say, a crunch that's, like, right next to his tower, like, right here. So I'm gonna try hit level 6, because what we do, that's when it become much easier to actually do out the save walk and do a lot of damage on him. So that should give me 6. Um... I might force him to use his dash right there, we do. Let's start kind of combo a little bit because I really want to make him back off because now he has no mana, no HP. I'm not going to shove this in because um, at this point, I don't want to freeze the wave because this Sevar, I know he wants to back up. See how he's backing already? Um, so that means that I want to make sure I shove this in and take the reset again uh, because whenever I keep shoving this lane like this in and then like Sevar misses the wave, I build a XP and gold lead on him. If that wave is going to crash in, he's going to miss that gold, that XP, and then by the time um, he clears out the wave or whatever's left of it, I'm always, it's going to already push back towards me, and I'm always going to be back in the lane. So see how he's already back there. Um, he, he's going to, no matter like how hard he tries, he cannot hold the wave um, near his tower. It's going to be right around like mid-ish, so that means that I'm going to be in the very safe spot coming back into the lane. He has Brimstone now, so that means that he will start to hurt a bit more, so we have to respect him a little bit in these training paths, but for the most part, I'm not too worried at all for that fact. 
And looks like he might be fine blue side. See how he just uses dash? That kind of tells me that he's going to take his blue side camp because it's really hard for him to farm in lane against your surely. So he's going to be like, yep, I'm just going to go farm in this blue side and I'm going to get my stack that way. Which is kind of smart by him, but also that means that he's also putting his jungle behind. Because if he's doing that, that means that he's not, his steel is not going to have any farm to really do on blue side as much. And that's the kind of problem I see people sometimes do too much, is that they keep taking the blue side jungle too much from the behind, which makes, probably helps them stay relevant in lane, but then puts the jungle really behind as soon as they start taking like 3 plus camps, right? Because having like your 3 camp or 4 camp down multiple times, especially in the early game, really hurts your jungler's um, tempo. Especially since it's a low tempo like steel jungle right here, not having those camps means that it's going to take even longer to kind of stack up. And Seva just doesn't want to deal with me, I guess. He's just gonna knock me away because he doesn't want to train to me at all. So that's kind of an interesting choice right there. This is the one thing that kind of irks me about Seva players. It's that, like, people, like, Seva, when you think about Ultimate, you think of it as a game playing um, Ultimate. You use it to make plays. But I see Seva off players, I use it as a way to just slap someone across the lane because I don't want to fight them. That doesn't seem like a very macho offlane kind of move right there. And that was kind of ugly to see that when people decide not to play the interact the lane phase and just decide to like play very anti lane phase to try to like only care about farming um, at this point, right? Because I mean, the very least, we're all um, throwing them out really aggressively. We are more than half a CS, and instead of all that's behind the CS, means that he's gonna get his shoulder pass very, very late. And that's gonna really make him suffer a lot. But I might go rotate mid right here, except that counter is just way there, fortunately. He was taking the mid tower. I don't know, it's like too late for me that to maybe come by. I'll kind of hover a little bit, see if they overstay, and maybe we can get the Fae, for example. She might overstay, and then me and Kamel could try to kill her. Except I think it looks like she back. Yeah, she back up already. That's right, fine. I lost some tempo on the right lane, but not too much. It just means that several get to actually farm for once, so it's not too bad. Because if the Fae happened to overstay right there, that could be a free kill right there with me and Kamek coming in. So I didn't have to like go for that. Because you never know um, if they're always going to go for those kind of plays or not. And I actually need to back ASAP because I've been farming too good to the point that I forgot I need to get my farming of the old process started. So I'm not even going to properly chug my wave all the way in. I don't really care. Actually, I'm going to push a little bit more because I'm actually a little bit off from having my quest online. I'm getting Tempest back with this, um, what do you call, with this Orbit Ghost. It's going to be so huge for me. I need... Literally just to use my ability on like something, anything. Alright, let's use it on the tier buff because the 3 camp is not up. So ideally you want to start your overgrowth um, stacking like ASAP. So ideally before 8 or 9 minutes is the kind of go target. But I'm coming up around 11 minutes which is not ideal. Because that means that I'm not going to get the full benefits of this item like as quick as I like. But I mean we can, we have a very good like strong lane phase anyway so it's not too bad. I'm gonna be coming pretty late to this fight only because I want to make sure I shove in the right lane so I can start to do damage to the towers and also try to like um okay, he's right there. I'll back right here. I don't think he's gonna stop my back anyway, so we can kinda shit shield right here. Nice. Okay, we got we signed the partner. Oh, let's go for Oath Keeper because again, um, Overgrowth is a scaling item, so like most of the time it can be pretty tough to actually do Overgrowth on certain characters. Like, I know people like to do Overgrowth on Countless, however, um, Countless is a really weak early game hero and that needs to spike ASAP, and going Overgrowth makes it even harder to, to accomplish that. But it's like Crunch has a very solid early game, so you can go for more scaling item because his early game. Hit would kind of carry him through for the most part. I want to start to shove this out because I see my camera doing the mini farm. I want to make sure that I can 
go help him with that because if he gets collapsed on by like the steel or the sieve wall, I want to make sure that. Oh, never mind. He just took that really fast. Wow. He took it a lot faster than I thought he would, which is quite interesting. But I it's good for me to still like chop that lane just in case something goes wild right there. Yeah, he's getting really low, so definitely our damage is not bad at all. Like, um, that's the one thing that I was sort of send my worry about because our damage is gonna suffer for going over ghost and going for magical items. But it gets a save while that has his first item online already, um, and going physical armor, which even though we're being magical items, um, we still do only physical damage output, right? So it's good to see that against the save while, um, we're still very kind of tanky. Ah, uh, dang. I was really hoping that he didn't have his dash back up already. Because he dashed earlier and then he used ultimate. I kind of figured this was a perfect opportunity to like, try to go in on him, but he just dashed away immediately, so I never got the chance to do my combo with Tempest damage coming in to help me um, finish him off. Yeah, I'm definitely coming in. We have the wave coming right here. A little jukey juke. Um, I think we catch him still. Except the steel is right here. I'm gonna have to blink right here. I have no way to like um to survive long enough against him. So I'm hoping my deck can get out of that. Wow, that deck was here as well. Mm, I. That's, I guess my bad for me to stop in my back. I was just not expecting the Decker to be right around the corner right there. But I mean, the support that rotate like that means that my tower, my team got a free dual lane tower right there. So I, it's not too bad. That's like that die right there, but it's what it is. And that means that we can get the free kill on the Chimera because no tower, no support means that's a very dead Murdoch right there. So maybe that helped the server get back in the game a little bit, but I'm already, I'm still very ahead against him in this 1v1, so we're gonna be able to easily knock down the C1 tower pretty soon. And we haven't even reached our full potential because we need to still stack up all the goals all the way. We still need to get Oath Keeper online, Life Binder, all that really good stuff, and we're gonna be a life saving behemoth. Oh, I thought it was a, I used my kill right there, so I ended up doing a double dash by accident. Okay, so we can try to see if we can force a wave. I want to see if we can just force a wave, do a couple of attacks, and try to finish off the tower. But that may may not happen, depending on how this goes. So let's see. He has no E, so let's kind of shove this in fully hard. Because I want. Um, yeah, he's gonna try to find me right there. Um, be out melee, dodge that. He has no cooldowns. Tower is kind of getting chunky chunk right now, so. Um, we need to get one more wave and ASCP for my um, Chimera to come in. So, here we go. The wave is always set. Now pushing. So, with Chimera being here, we're gonna force this tower all the way in because both me and him are gonna base attack and the tower is gonna go down really quickly. So that's very nice for him to come swing by right there. I have enough for Obi um Oath Keeper this time, and that's gonna be a really nice power spike. Um, that's like the actual true power spike to build when we get Oath Keeper online first. That's gonna be the first DPS power spike, and then obviously once Obi goes fit finishing um, fit stacking, we can get the benefits of the evolved version as well. So I'm gonna back several back. I have. Ghost Keeper, I'm gonna stop being in two, and then we're gonna get some magical life here from Life Finder. Interesting note: the magical life here applies to like Ghost Keeper far. So like when I do the bonus damage from Ghost Keeper on my basic attacks, I also life here from that as well from like the um Life Finder. So there's some extra like tech right there that makes this build even more sustained than it already is. 
Mm. I'm going to rotate the mid. Seems like they might do a lot of stuff right here. Yeah, face here. They're trying to do something with the. Yeah, Faye tried to go for a greedy ultimate play, but then CC just said no nope to her, and then she just got blown up instantly right there. I'm gonna go to white because I don't think we can chop that power in uh, with all of us there, so we might as well start the split push a little bit. I can start stealing camps right here and try to um, put the um, steel foot behind. Modak is mid, so I might swing by because there's nothing really for me to do on this right side besides maybe keep pushing in right. And then we see this um, Sivog right there. He ulted me immediately because it kind of seemed like he was using the army to get back the lane quicker, so that's kind of why I figured. So I just went on the melee, got free ultimate, which though it doesn't really matter too much because he's still like super annoying to deal with. Oh, dang, the slow is gonna make sure. Make it so that we can't go on stay on top of it anymore unfortunately. Maybe I could save my double on B, just walk up to the Murloc and save it for the play, but um I just wanna make sure I just kill good from them more than anything and then we can look to do faint twos now. I'm gonna try and see if we can start to fight people a lot more because we've been trying to fight the Sevog a lot and he's been very anti fighting for him right now. So I'm gonna try and see if we can get a more proper opponent we can kind of build it out. So maybe we'll take the mid a lot more, maybe try to hunt down the steel and try to take him on. Because this is the build that if they don't have high burst damage, we can actually stay alive for so so long. Um, so this is the build that's very good against. Um, enemies that doesn't have high burst or sustain damage, but once you go against like the like, let's say like a counters, I think Fake you knows to kind of bust me down not careful. Once we go against those people, then we have to be a little bit careful of the burst damage because we won't have a way to sustain. We won't be able to obviously basically attack people and different abilities to fight. Yeah, Kaim is having the same thought because he seems like he really wants to fight the steel a lot. But that means that I think Faze will turn over and I think we're a little bit too late to rotate. Oh no, she's right here. Faze used the ultimate because she thought I was going to chase that but I got stunned so I couldn't go all the way right there. Yeah, everyone's dis disengaging, so we can't unfortunately fight anymore. So I'll just look to um, push out mid then. Dang, again with the ultimate knockback, he just does not want to fight ever. Like, it's getting a little bit annoying. I really want to. Get some KDA on the board, but it's not gonna be the case just yet. And I don't think we can power dive that unfortunately just yet. So I guess we're just gonna keep farming, keep dealing resources, try to um, be the strongest in the game um, by taking all these resources for ourselves. I have no mana, so I can't fight anymore. Even if I wanted to, I have. My ult finally um, evolving right now, so let's go get that bad boy evolved. There we go. So now we have a lot more ability, haste, health, magical power, etc. Because this is another thing that this build does a really good job of is you build a lot more ability haste on this build than your typical punch build. And when you have a lot of high ability haste, that means you get the unga bunga with your combos um, more with him. I know I just probably bane me, but I'm still gonna fight this out to see how much damage can really pull out.
Yep, there's a lot of people there now, so we'll back off. We kind of expect the four people coming in. My team is around the corner, but I don't know if I'll live long enough for my team to go counter gank them at the moment. Ready to and it does seem like my team is now engaging. I'm gonna go this way because um, this is the only way I can get out. Ooh, so low. Oh no, the Deku is gonna finish me off. The seven gonna come finish me off. The one, so the only time he's gonna come in and fight me is when I'm actually just one shot the bow. That is so unfortunate, but we've got the kill and we able to live pretty long right there. It's just um, there's only so much you can do when we got hard CC focus right there. And then we have to live, try to see what we can get away with. Speaking of getting CC uh, unlocked, that my countless got an ultimate cancel because she got CC in the last second. So we're both kind of showing the same pain right now. Okay, we got Life Finder. This is another source of high ability haste. And also match with Life Seer as well. So we have all this Life Seer from Life Finder, Over Life Bend, and Tempest. And then we have 82 ability haste. That's way more than what you typically get on Quench. And <laughs> let alone 3 items. So we're gonna have very short cooldowns. 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 9 seconds. Yeah, that's pretty dang short on all our abilities right there. Let's actually go on the Fae. She just used the ultimate. I'm hoping that. She won't have an ultimate, is my guess, um, at this time. So let's just try to see if we can get on top of her. She does have an ultimate still, which, I mean, Faye has the short ultimate anyways. So, probably not too big of a surprise that she had it up already. But we got the solo kill on her. Um, with some assistance by the deck, it's not a totally solo kill, but we did all the heavy lifting with the damage right there. Very nice, nice. We see the drone on the right side, that's fine. That means that I'm gonna go farm left side for a little bit. Yeah, so far, like, I don't really feel like my damage is that really kind of took a turn for the worse. Really feels like I'm like really like double actually. Oh I tried to knock her up but she d jumped right over me. Uh, Let's go help the Kamiya. I think he's the one getting caught out at the moment. Depends on... I'm trying to see what the... Okay, I'm gonna get CC locked. I get all on me out because I got CT lock focus that fight. That means my team gets a opportunity to just go on them because if they use all the resources on me, that lets my Chimera Drunk go to town. So I'll back off because if I go back in, I'll probably get ulted by the Fae if I'm not careful. So we're gonna go for what's that item? I'm trying to think what's a good item for us to go, but honestly, this is sort of like the code build that I had in mind at this present moment, so I can't think of what else I can maybe get besides maybe just go for a pain scepter for anti fly for so just more magical power and health for you surely. I need to keep thinking on a little bit on what's another good item we can go. Maybe Spear of Mirror could be pretty funny to go like to get life seal on that as well. We might go for that, we shall see. But we see them going on the prime mode, this is actually a good opportunity to do so, so good call up by the team to go on this. I'm gonna try and tank for this prime mode because I am um, I kind of getting pretty low. I want him to make sure that he's had plenty of HP. Oh, I did that pretty late because I don't know if he got stunned and couldn't smite afterwards, but either way, he got it, so we kind of shield me at this point. You know, I'm gonna try to see if I can sneak a 1v1 anywhere. Not anymore because now Steel knows I'm here, but I'm trying to see if I can hunt down the Fae. I think getting the Fae um, would be really good because I'm probably. It's probably like the easiest target besides Murdoch, I can just bust down. Maybe I can bust down the seal, but I think the seal's been um, around his team a lot, so it's kind of hard to find him by himself at the moment. Okay, 
There we go. Maybe we can go on that. Nine more. Maybe we can just for probably just force it at this point. Like going for prime. Oh, I see Murdoch. Is he actually gonna walk this way? Um. Okay. People are here. Um, they looks like they're the playing play behind the fog wall right here. Oh, nice pick by the countless. Um, I'm gonna go old prime because um, even though I don't those two are fine for the most part, yeah, the steel here. So now I'm gonna have to show up and make sure that the steel doesn't get a chance to come in. There we go. He tried to come in, but we, he was already pretty low, so we were able to just combo him right there. I got pretty low right there, that's why I merely blinked because I wasn't sure if the favorite was going to come finish me off or not. Heroic. Alright, so... I think the enemy team has one last chance to defend. Um, I don't think we can finish this off just yet because we don't have any inhibitors down. We're probably gonna get two on this um, push on white and mid, but I think by the time we get that down, they might come back online. Except Mother is actually gonna die right there, so this could be an end angle right here actually. And it's gonna be the GG's right there. So I was actually pretty surprised at how much damage we're able to do with this build because um, we, if you do take a look at the scalings on like Punch's ability, you can kind of really see like how much more in favor he is with this goal scaling. However, I think it sort of gets balanced out for the fact that um, magical items do tend to on average have more magical power on them for this physical item so we end up having a lot of magical power so i think in the same scenario for physical power i don't think we get the same amount of physical power so even though we have less scaling on our magical um building magical power for conscious abilities um the iron sword to make up for that because it provide ample amounts of magical power Especially since we go for like the orbit growth kind of build where we have a lot more raw stats and all across the kind of departments right there. Yeah, I think this is actually a really kind of cool um build. I'm not as like super gem pack as it normally is, but you kind of see like it's it seems like there's nothing totally different like against the servers. It seems like my damage was really that bad. Cause like Sevar, like I said, gets really annoying when he just builds tank and then it becomes really hard to fight him out right there. But it seems like we were the snag it right there. Um so just shout out to Lance because he's a homie, um really cool guy for the PCC that I kinda go host of all. And we kinda figured that um I'll just do a kill with him and get him whoop him into my more quick builds right here. But we had a choice going back to that conversation earlier. I highly recommend if you get the time to play the remasters Bonelands 1. I'll say I'll, I like that game more than Bonelands 3 if I'm being honest. Really? Yeah, Bonelands 3 was not as good as the first two. It was a story, but also it just didn't feel like as good of a Bonelands game. At least for me, like I played 1 or 2 a whole lot. When I played 3, it just didn't click with me as well as I hope. I think some of the stuff they did in that game was actually really cool, but then I think the story more name was a huge turn off for me. Like number two, like you play it, like the story is like really good, so you, you can just do do multiple playthroughs to it because the story just kept you going. But I, after playing that story once in Bonus GM, like I did not want to play through this again. <laughs> it was that bad for me. Oh man. Yeah. I, I really liked too. I thought it was really fun. It's all good. We, we, get we, we, we like the aggression. One to one. Yeah. We like the aggression. What? Why did it count as my Q? Oh my god. I'm getting hate crime already. Level 2 count as gank. I got level 2. Oh my god, she's still trying to gank me. Why? Oh my god. Zeus is actually getting a lot of love right now. It's so sad. I'm, I'm sad. 
Like this is like interesting start to the game. This is like the combat where I saw except the counters doing a blue star strat. <laughs> oh my god. What's been cooking on your side of life? Oh, uh, <laughs> there's been a lot going on, not gonna lie. A lot of Between, good things? Like, to... What's that? A lot of good things or just a lot? Uh, a lot of everything, uh, not gonna lie. Your skill right. It's been, uh, it's been a, a journey. Uh, I definitely know you're gonna get through it really strongly, so I believe, and I give you my closest points. CJ, this is why you're the best. Why is Malika saying to report you? What the heck? That's, that's so that's toxic. What the heck? Did you wait? Did you say that Malika wanted to play with you? I, uh, oh, oh. No, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Who, they, no, the chicken soup just like instant locked support. Okay. Okay. We love mobile communities. We love it. I mean, this is just, this is just like an online typical thing, more than anything. Mm -hmm. I think League is like definitely way worse. I would say it's not nearly as bad. No, counter's on the side again. I'm scared. Oh. Your skill rises. <laughs> yeah, and now the Velika is starting to steal all my CS. <laughs> Why are we that's a cold bro? If she continues to do that the whole game, let me know, and I will personally look into that myself. Break. 
crunch, bro. Yeah, this guy's... <laughs> this guy's being a jerk. Yeah, he... Okay, yeah, he's... Yeah, I'll... I'll pause him. I'm always so surprised that if I'm, when I'm going full magical quench, I still do a lot of damage. Um, because you know how quench is mostly like physical based scaling, right? Yeah. But you think that when you build magical items, he got feels feel pretty bad, but I'm kind of stuck in the sales around. As if I'm just a normal quench, so. Very interesting. So. Yeah, now this guy is just not even helping. Such a bummer. But yeah, you're you're kinda you're kinda doing some DPS. Oh yeah. No, it's okay, it's not your fault, but it's... I'll just ask Kali if I can follow her ban him, but after this game. So if you can, just try to see if you can farm as close to your turn as you can. And if it's too hard to step up, just use your grenades to last it from a distance, fights. Just some like, um, PP tips, tips and tricks. But that's why I like Trim Blast a lot, is because, um, if it's really hard, if you can't step up to the wave of the last hit, you can just chuck grenades from afar. It keeps, um, farming safely that way. Farm if I could. Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't I don't know like um, what's going on in that lane, but that's what I'll be doing. Like if I have a support that's literally just doesn't exist, then I'll just try to stay up far back as I can. I look like you're doing a little bit over there. I would say though, we scared really good at the team, so I think I'll win condition either way, it's going to be the mid to the game, so I, I think we can so. Yeah, I think we're totally fine still.
I forget for you. Do you watch anime shows by any chance? Uh, watch what? Do you watch anime shows by any chance? Uh, whenever I get a chance to. I haven't watched a ton, but I try to. Nice. Do you like um comedy anime shows? I I'm not sure. How about do you like fancy kind of shows like the magic that kind of good stuff? Yes, definitely. Watch Mash Show then. It's like one of the newest season, um, shows this season that I highly recommend. Oh, what's it called again? Mashal. I'll, I'll send you the link later. It's a fancy comedy anime. I, it's like really good. Wait, is that the one where he uses muscle magic? Yes! Yes! Have you seen clips of that? I need to watch that. It looks so funny. It is really good. Really, really good. I highly recommend. I'm cooking this countless, by the way. He's back in with full health, full mana. Hmm. No, one more hit. Sevok, I believe. Gideon, I believe. No, the countless lives. Oh, we get the house in? That's fine. Okay, thanks. Allied tower. You know, you got, you're doing good on CS. I mean, it doesn't feel like if uh, I'm comparing your CS to the ADC and you're not that far behind at all. That is the joy of Twin Blast. I can farm from a, a million miles away. <laughs> exactly. We love TBs. We love TBs when you play and do a lane, not when you play mid or off lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially not off lane. Uh, <laughs> um... I kind of did a bit of my recently offering. Oh. Like. It was a Bruiser TV, okay? It's not the Quinn's bill, it's actually a Cook bill where I play him like a Bruiser. Oh no, this is the house of a great buff? No way. Jeez, dude, I can't do anything. I'm so far behind. Okay, I'm coming then. Oh, Bellica is. Oh, he's trying to boost him. Like, you're pushing. He probably just wants the tower. Yeah. Oh, get her. Get her. Nice. Um, I might take down the T1 left. Just so we can get that. Actually, you can do it. I'm coming back to life. You should get that tower down me so you get more solo kills. Okay. Yeah, I think this is coming up. Um, I'm gonna just let the Sarah's split push ish. Oh. You might get my tier 2 tower, but I think that's fine if that means we get the main twos. I think it's worth it. Oh, we should this. Going to right now.
Not that I can really do on that one. Bummer. Nice chilling. I think we should just go for me plan if we mean save log. The scouts are just loving left lane right now. So even if one side is losing, we can do a lot of good stuff on the other side. We have five people on the right side. <laughs> oh, Seva, he should he should not die. Oh no. <laughs> oh wait, we might I might have to go on this. Nah, it's just it's dead. Um, we can sleep this. It's a fight. Oh wait, Gain. I think Gain's try actually trying to fight right now. Okay. That fight was actually really villainful. Really but as strong as a team. Oh, I almost went over the wall. Are you talking to your live stream? I'm a. Uh, I'm. <laughs> exclaiming in sadness. Oh. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> and I'm trying not to do that in your ear. No, no, you're good. Well, I have pawned in my ult successfully, so what could be? Now back is on the right side. I think they're trying to shut me down at this point, so they might, they might get more love on left side. Yeah. I don't even know what I do here. Um, because pushing my lane, well, my, so my, I might like step up. Look right here. Mm. Okay. Nice, you got to look on her because three people were kind of looking at me first. Hey. Um, what's your faint use now? I mean, that's coming up. No jungle, that means free ejected first. So sit on the back of the pit, focus on taking Fainters, and then once Fainters is dead, Recruit you can turn on the team. Ready. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're scaling, you got this. Oh, game's doing a really good job um, playing the back. Trying to force the five off me. Careful. Ah, uh, countless. Even with the last hits. Yep. That was fine. If Kira wasn't there, we killed the countless. Easy. I went one to one. Yeah. Not too bad.
Oh, I know I'm gonna build forest now. Take a guess. What item would be really good on crunch if I'm doing the magical build only? Hmm. What? Uh, I don't know. War world breaker? No. It has magical armor on it. That's your, that's your hint. Check ballot? No. Magical only. What? Oh, what is it? Two seven bracelets. Interesting. You know, some people sometimes want that item last on crunch. If they worry about CC, they can like have a CC shoot by pressing the weak crunch ability and go in ham. It's actually like it's actually good. Yeah, it's a good fight for tech and magical armor against this countless and I get the CC um immunity. It means that I can completely ne negate like all the CC, no problem. It's actually really good. That's pretty sick. Is this a dread game, do you think? Is dread the one with the the magical shield? Um, I would build that as a last time. You want to get like perforated right here third. I think that's the build order, perforated, and I'm, I can't remember the first item. But get perforated, that's kind of like a cool item component. Oh no, he died. No mid. I'm coming mid. Wait, what, where'd the Q go? I was so convinced. Wait. Bummer. No, that's actually crazy. If she actually stayed with you, like an actual support, um, she would, you would actually um, live right there. But she greeted for the how to kill. <laughs> Thing what Enemy I can do right now since the, all the lanes are pushed up at the moment. Yeah, everything's super pushed yeah. up. Yeah, I only have the right lane to go for, it, so I think I'll just spend over there real quick. Yeah, I don't think I can even invade. I was just gonna come in, be careful. Um, yeah, I don't think we can still do thing twos. 
any chance he walks up. Nope. Might be on a ward. Yeah, we should try to see if we can get a pick. I think trying to go for paint is really hard right now. Okay. is just doing poke. Mm. Yeah, we can't do any ejectors for the time being. Yeah, they're all up. And then all back to is coming in too. I mean, Seven was trying to look for a play more than anything. Oh, right here. Wait, can't not by the me. Uh, right here. Oh, that's a thing. Oh, nice. Janice is looking at me in the back. Careful, Howie and Janice. Yeah. Got you! Nice! Let's go. I'm sick! I think we push mid actually. I don't think we can. We can't. We're not healthy enough to do objectives. We're not healthy enough to do objectives, so. Okay. Oh. I realized we could one shot right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Enemy towers I thought he used ultimate, but that's why I thought it was fine to keep pushing too. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty sure he did, but I died really fast. Yeah. I, honestly, I had like 75% HP, and then he queued me once, and I had like 20. I should say, please announce I'm cooking. Ooh. I kind of want to go on him, but I know he's not alone. Oh? Wait, that's huge. That's huge, yeah. I'm gonna go on the viewer. I'm gonna do it. I'm scared of Howie. Come on. Nice. Just in time. Nice. Uh, we had to go for like oh fine with something, but I have like no HP. I'm gonna reset really fast. Uh, I I guess we're going go fine mode then. Yeah, I just have to reset. Yeah. I always have to do old prime first, but I guess fine mode is better technically. Plus, plus I get the life seal on this. So it's actually not bad. Oh my god, this is actually so cool. <laughs> my combo is actually so good. But you see, I'm doing so much damage. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. Holy. Normally there's like a small delay between your combos, but with this build, I, I can actually do permanent abilities with Q and E. It's actually sick. No way. I can, yeah, it's actually really sick. So there's no like auto attack delay, and now I get to constantly always do my abilities. Uh, we want you over here for prime. So let's just get ready to come here soon. Okay, right there. Coming. I'm almost there.
Nice. That's a pre farm. Now nice. we now we do it. Gorgeous. It's like you. Hey. <laughs> Nah, that's all you, man. That's all you. I'm pretty sure Zemo can tower dive this. Just get ready to follow up if he goes for it. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Uh, what is this spell that I have forget? Nice. Let's go. Let's go. I did say, uh, we played for the mid to late, we scale. So we're chilling. We definitely scaled. I had straight up support stats, but who cares? We <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's not your fault. You just got supportive. She spent more time typing than actually helping you as you should. Yeah. That was fun though. Oh yeah. That was fun. That was fun. It was fun for me, like 100%. I actually, wow, I actually pop up really hard with the yeah, AP build. <laughs> Wait, I hear so much. 16,000? Oh my god. I was cruising, probably boosting. Nice, GG's.